This video's theme is restaurant stories because of today's sponsor, Factor 75, which is a service that lets you skip all the shopping, cooking, and cleaning by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. Factor's meals are ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is heat and enjoy, then get back to your daily routine. And if you're looking for calorie conscious options during the busy fall season, you can try delicious, dietitian approved calorie smart meals with around or less than 550 calories per serving. Factor also offers Gourmet Plus meals as part of your weekly options, which is perfect if you're craving something a little more special with your meal plan. With Gourmet Plus meals, you'll get a side of premium produce like broccoli and broccolini to go along with your choice of protein. And keep an eye out for surf and surf and surf and turf meal options coming soon. I personally love to cook, but sometimes finding the time to cook and food shop is a luxury. So for me, Factor has made life easier and gives me more time to do other things and stick to my goals. If you're interested, head to Factor75.com or click the link in the description and use code NIGHTMARE50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. When I was 25, I went on a solo trip to Rio de Janeiro. My favorite DJ would be there that weekend, and I always wanted to go anyway. I've traveled solo many times in my life and never had any issues. Airbnbs aren't expensive a little outside of the city, and the one I was staying at was very nice and comfortable. It was its own little one-floor house, but the hole inside was very modern and clean. The Friday that I landed, I unpacked at the Airbnb, grabbed dinner, and went to the rooftop venue where the DJ would be performing. The first day and night all went well, and I met some really cool people at the rooftop, James, Ethan, and Jess. Ethan and Jess were dating. James, I guess, was third wheeling on the trip. The next day, I met up with them as they were also on a trip here. We got brunch together, then we checked out some of the sites together, like the Christ Redeemer and Sugarloaf Mountain, and then we hit the beaches. Unfortunately, they had tickets that they had already bought to another show that night, which I couldn't go to. So I was back to my solo ventures, which was fine. I still found things to do. Eventually, when I was hungry, I walked back in the direction of the Airbnb towards the outside of the city. On the way back, I stopped at a restaurant I found. I can speak a little Portuguese, but I'm by no means fluent. So I tried to keep to places where people seemed to speak English while I was alone. The menu on the window had some English writing, so I went inside. This restaurant was kind of small and dark. A lot of the restaurants in the area were expensive, but this one seemed affordable, so I stayed. The dining space was very long and narrow. It wasn't really busy. There were a few people sat further down at a couple tables. Then there was a man seated at a table basically next to mine. He was about 50. I wondered if he was another tourist. He and I were the only two people seated alone in here. The server came over and initially spoke in Portuguese, and I asked in Portuguese if he speaks English and he said yes. From there on, I ordered in English. I noticed the man at the other table, looking over, watching as I ordered. It was kind of weird. When the server walked away after taking my order, the man said in English with a Portuguese accent that my Portuguese sounded good. I said thank you, and he started talking to me in Portuguese, as if giving me a lesson. I think he thought he was coming off as charming, but it was annoying and creepy. I kept looking down at my phone to act distracted, but he'd keep talking to me, both in English and in Portuguese. I'd humor him to be nice and not create awkwardness, and I tried my best to converse with him in Portuguese, as he'd correct my mistakes while trying to speak. The conversation was basically where I'm from, why I'm here, what I did today, and where I'm staying. I kind of just made up that I'm staying with a friend. What really creeped me out was when he told me how sexy I am when I talk in Portuguese. I was hoping he was leaving soon, but a part of me died inside when I saw the waiter bring him his food. Luckily, my food didn't take long. I got some pork stew dish. The man asked how it was. I told him fine. He stopped talking as much now that he was eating, thank God. I ate quickly. When I was done, I hurriedly asked for the check just because I didn't want to converse with this man anymore. The man also asked for the check right after I did, which I found so annoying and strange. He wasn't even done eating. Once I paid, I got up and walked out. The man said something in Portuguese, but all I said was bye and kept walking. It was dark out now, and the streets were a little less lively. I was walking for a while when I came to an intersection. 
While waiting to cross, I noticed the man from the restaurant across the street. He was definitely looking at me, but looked away the opposite direction when I noticed him. Maybe he had to walk the same way, it wasn't that unlikely. I continued to walk back, and as I was getting closer, I kept turning back just to see if he was still in sight. He wasn't. I arrived to the Airbnb. I got to the front door and looked around one more time, and I noticed way down the block, that man standing on the corner by the intersection. He was staring in this direction. I felt my heart drop. He was following me. I let myself inside the house and locked the door. Then I closed all the blinds. Now he knew where I was staying. I panicked and called my dad and told him. He told me to just be alert and make sure everything is locked and to maybe keep a knife by me. It was a Saturday night and my flight wasn't until late the next day, so I did want to go out. Eventually, I called an Uber to a bar in the downtown area and I went to a venue having house music night. I was there for maybe a couple hours before calling an Uber back to the Airbnb. When I got back, I let myself into the house kind of drunk. I sat down on the couch just to relax for a bit, but I noticed something. I heard the sound of the outside, and then I saw the blinds to one of the windows blowing from the breeze. The window in the kitchen was open. I had all the windows shut because the air conditioning was running. I immediately knew to get up and leave the house quickly. I called the emergency number and did my best to articulate to the operator in Portuguese that there was a home break-in. The police showed up in a matter of minutes, and I came out from behind the bush I was hiding in across the street when they did. One of the police officers did speak a little bit of English, so I was able to tell him that the window was opened and I was being followed earlier. The police entered the house and yelled things I didn't understand. The moment I saw them walking outside with a man from the restaurant in handcuffs was the most shocking moment of my life. The mix of emotions I felt, disbelief yet relief, but also horrified. If I hadn't called the cops, if I had gone into the bedroom where he was probably hiding, I didn't even want to think about it. He was taken away and I never had to see his ugly, creepy face again. I'm glad he was stupid enough to not close the window behind him. I should have listened to my dad and locked all the windows as well. I just never imagined he would actually climb through one though. I left the next day and haven't returned to Brazil since. It was the holidays. Most of my friends were away, so I had decided to look for a part-time job to earn a bit of money. After waiting around for about a week, I finally got a call from a nearby restaurant asking me to come in for a trial. I had a fair bit of waitering experience, so I wasn't too surprised when the owner offered me the position. The place had a really creepy atmosphere to it. It was small, dimly lit, and every so often, a terrible smell would circulate through the air. It wasn't somewhere I would have usually gone for, but I needed the money and kept reminding myself that I'd only be here until college started back up. Anyway, it was around 10 p.m., and I was out the front by myself, cleaning the cutlery while I waited for the last table to leave. It was a table of four big guys. They were pretty rough looking. In fact, if I passed them on the street, I would have assumed they were homeless. Half an hour passed, and they finally got up to leave. I smiled as one of them came to the register to pay. That's $42.50 altogether, I said. He immediately handed over a bunch of crinkled notes with a big grin on his face. Unfortunately, I had seen this kind of look before and braced myself for the cheesy pickup line. He said to me, you doing anything tonight, cutie, bringing himself closer to the register. Thank you, have a good night, I replied, trying to make it clear that I was not interested. He laughed and walked out the door, mumbling something under his breath as he went. As soon as he was out of sight, I quickly cleared the dishes, cleaned down, and got changed out of my staff uniform. I waved goodbye to the last kitchen hand as I walked out the door and into the night. My house was only a couple of blocks away, so every night I walked to save gas. I had only walked for about five minutes when a loud whistle startled me. I looked off into the direction it came from and froze in fear. It was the same guy from the restaurant. He was on the opposite side of the street, signaling for me to come over with a large grin on his face. I took a pause before my instincts kicked in, and I started to quickly walk away. My house was still about 10 minutes away, and I could feel him getting closer with every step. Terrifying thoughts were racing around in my head, knowing very well that this could end badly. I turned the corner and started to sprint down the footpath. 
I felt tears gather up in my eyes as loud footsteps followed closely behind me. I didn't look behind out of fear, when all of a sudden, a hand firmly grabbed my shoulder and yanked me backwards. I turned to see the man. His face was red, and his grin had morphed into a furious expression. He put his finger up to his lips. Don't scream or I'll cut you, he whispered. At this point, I was ready to accept my fate, when out of nowhere, I felt a sudden burst of rage explode inside of me. I grabbed his face and dug my nails deep into his eyes. The man let out a loud, horrible noise as he clenched his face in pain. I took this chance and made a run for it. I ran all the way back to my flat, and after struggling to put the key in the door, I managed to get inside. As soon as I shut the door, I collapsed down onto the ground out of exhaustion and started to cry. My roommates all rushed down the stairs to see if I was okay. After walking me to a couch, I explained what happened. They were all shocked, whilst at the same time happy to see that I escaped from the man. I rang up the restaurant and quit the next day. It was a shame, really. The owners were so kind and I really didn't mind the place. But I was too terrified to return, knowing that that man could be waiting for me. I've started back at college now, and I'm slowly recovering from that incident. Sometimes I do get nightmares just thinking about what may have happened if I hadn't attacked that man like I did. I was 19 and strapped for cash, so I temporarily took a second job working as a waitress at a diner. It was open till 3 a.m. on weeknights and 24 hours on the weekends. On the weekends, it was always a bunch of drunk kids at night that would come after they left the bars. During the week, most people that came late night were people working overnight shifts or just getting off from work. I would do the overnight shifts twice a week. Anything more than that, I probably would have passed out from a lack of sleep. I'd be the only server past 10 o'clock on the weekdays because there wasn't an abundance of customers, especially at the later hours of the night. One night, a larger man came in alone, around like 1 a.m. There was only one other customer in the restaurant at the time, I believe. I seated him. He started talking to me in a flirtatious way right away. It was always the older, unattractive ones that would be the most flirty. I had to deal with it with a smile, though, as I basically was working on tips. He ordered a burger and a milkshake. Then he told me his name, Trevor. Trevor would keep staring at me from across the diner as I would be sitting doing things on my phone. He was the only customer left at this point now. He called me by my name over to the table. I went over with a smile and he asked for the check. He left after paying and when I went to collect the tip and clean the table, I noticed along with the $5 tip, he left his number and a winking face on the bill. Gross. I crumpled it up and threw it away. I thought that was the end of Trevor and I's story, but it wasn't. A few nights later, in came Trevor again, super late at night when no one else was in the place. I greeted him and sat him to a table. He actually hit me with a, how is my favorite server doing tonight, which was odd considering I only served him one time. He again started some conversation with me, and I was way too exhausted for this, but I had to put a smile on my face and entertain it. I thought maybe this time he'd give a better tip if I acted interested, but that backfired because he mistook my friendliness as interest and invited me to come on his boat sometime. I asked what kind of boat it is to play along, and he showed me a picture of this tiny little thing that could barely fit two people based on the looks of it. I said, oh wow, my dad has a boat too. I should have said boyfriend looking back now, but I was trying to get a good tip out of him. He asked for my number, and I told him I'm not allowed to give customers my number, I could get fired. He actually believed this, but after he left, he once again left his number on the bill, this time with a note saying something along the lines of, I bet you were just shy last time. Don't be shy this time, you can text me. It'll be our little secret, followed by another winking face. He again only tipped $5. This guy was a creep who didn't even tip well. I hope to not see him again. But this wouldn't be a story if I didn't. He came in the next week on another night I was working. It had to be like 2 a.m. and it seemed like he'd always come in right as the place would become empty. Almost like he was sitting in the parking lot waiting to come when I wouldn't be serving any tables. This time he came in and the first thing he said was, you don't call or write? But he didn't say it with a smile, he said it with a serious face. I told him I'm really flattered but I really can't text customers. He didn't say anything, he just walked out. I was relieved, honestly. 
I'd rather he just stop coming in. The next day, while at my other job, I got a text from one of the other waitresses asking if I knew who the fat bald guy was. I said, yeah, he's so creepy. Why? She told me that he asked for my full name. I asked her if she gave it to him, and she said yes. I was honestly really upset, and this made me uncomfortable. She said that he claimed he just wanted the name of the really amazing waitress from last night. Later that day, I got a text. It was from Trevor. He said, hey, it's Trevor, your favorite customer. I know you said you can't give your number out, so I took it upon myself to get it myself. Now you didn't break any rules, haha. I was at a loss for words. I blocked the number and hoped that would be the end of it. But later that week, after I got off from work, I found an envelope tucked under my windshield wiper. I grabbed it and got in my car. Its contents were disturbing. It was a bunch of pictures of me in the diner, taken from the parking lot. The pictures got more disturbing though, when they started being of my apartment and of me standing on my front deck or unlocking the front door. Most disturbing of all was a picture taken through the front window at night. I drove straight to the police precinct with the photos to report this. These pictures accompanied with the text I received from him was damning enough. I stayed at my parents' house that night, and the next day, a detective called that Trevor guy and told him if he continued to contact me, it would be considered harassment and he would be arrested. I still quit the job at the restaurant just to be safe. My lease was up the next month, and so I moved to a new apartment. I didn't want to have any chance of that man finding me again. He was the first and only true stalker I've ever dealt with in my life.